Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight, a special guest joining us for an in-depth discussion. New Orleans City Councilwoman at large Stacy Head is here. She served 12 years on the New Orleans City Council and tonight she's talking everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. A candid conversation less than one month before Stacy Head's time as one of the longest serving city council members in New Orleans history comes to an end. First off. <laughs> that sounds horrible. I don't know. It's a good thing. Thank you for being here, first off. I'm delighted to. Has it set in yet that this is the end of what's been a long run? People forget you were kind of, can I use this term, just a kid in yes, your 30s back in 2006 when you were elected. Has that set in that this is coming to an end? It has. I think because we have this odd transition where we have many months before uh, the new people take office, it has allowed a lot of reflection and allowed me to put, I guess, my house in order personally and professionally to try to leave things in good, a good place for the new people. You're always prepared. You have a lot of notes to get to. <laughs> but let me ask you this. What are you doing in the home stretch here? Anything in particular in your final days in office? Um, the, I guess one of the last things I want to do is uh, ask the City Planning Commission to do a retail study to try to discourage formula retail on traditional corridors like magazine and also to try to reduce the number of dollar stores in New Orleans East, but to push formula retail to traditional commercial corridors like um, that, are, that are for larger scale box like Claiborne Avenue. Uh, the second thing I want to do is to get a proper definition. I've been working for about two years on a proper definition for what a demolition is, oddly, in a city with so much historic architecture and theoretically a lot of protections to make sure that we don't waste that important historic architecture. Uh, we don't have a great definition for demolition. So those are the two, I guess, final things I want to check off my list. I have a whiteboard in my office. We've got a lot of checks that have been completed in the last six or so months. Uh, but those are the last two that I want to do. Still working to the final day, I take it. So you've served under two mayors, Ray Nagin, Mitch Landrieu, and you know the mayor-elect Latoya Cantrell very well. We're going to get to questions about them in a second. But first off, right out the gate, what is your biggest accomplishment? 12 years on the council. Hmm. You've covered a lot of ground. I see you have a laundry list here, here of, of things to get to. What is your biggest accomplishment? What do you put your finger on and say, you know what? 12 years serving this city post-Katrina, this is my biggest accomplishment. Getting blighted property into commerce. Um, I, it took me about eight years, and I did not have success until I worked in partnership with this administration. But we had... Oh, gosh, thousands, tens of thousands of properties that were blighted out of commerce off the tax rolls that had been adjudicated to the city. And so I worked with the mayor's administration, the state legislature, to make sure that our laws were clear, that we could uh, sell those properties in auctions. And we've raised over $20 million for the taxing bodies for uh, the city of New Orleans. And that's, of course, has residual benefits, as well encouraging the city to get surplus properties off of its books. The school board's done a great job on that. So if I had to say one thing, because I'm, I'm very fiscally focused, uh, raising money for the city in a way that doesn't overtax the people that are already paying taxes, that's the biggest accomplishment. But then secondarily, and I think it goes through most of the things that have been my initiative, it's been trying to focus on basic city functioning. One of the great things about New Orleans is we focus on the fun things. We focus on the big issues. We have parties, we have festivals, we have music, we have culture. And we do it well. And we do it so well. We do it better than any place in the world. What we don't do is focus on the things that the average citizen, the Travers Mackle when he's not on television, wants from the city of New Orleans. So I have been a dogged advocate for basic city functioning, for departmental functioning, for treating the average person the same that you would treat someone who can hire a consultant to say, come to City Hall. So that actually brings me to my third thing that I'm working on, which is to move the final portion of permitting, which is for bars and restaurants that want to get an ABO license to one stop. This administration did a great job of putting most of permitting into the one stop shop, and it truly is. They have done an, a really good job of making permitting easier in New Orleans. It's not great, but it's easier than it's ever been. I'm trying to move the ABOs into the one stop. So I forgot. My whiteboard has still got a few things. No, keep going. This is all important. Yeah, so this, we need all... to get that done because that's the last thing to make it easy for the average Joe who wants to open a cafe. Because and it's the biggest complaint people hear is that City is. Hall is too difficult to do business with. Is it better from 2006 to 2018 since you've been in public office? No question it's better. Absolutely it's better. 
and it was they were strange growing pains and we're even seeing that with this last final push to make city hall function better there are actually people and there are actually interests who do not want efficiency within city hall because they have the ability to navigate the inside system better than everyone else and so they have a competitive advantage is that crazy what you just said though that there are people that don't want efficiency yes. inside city hall how do you weed how do you weed people like that out because people are going to hear that phrase and say uh -huh. wait what Makes did she no just sense. say well you know i have been unabashed about saying that publicly when there are groups individuals or collectively groups that argue against efficiency you usually i'll make up a, an excuse but i try to expose them because if you are just a person who wants to open a cafe and get a liquor license, you have to go to multiple places within, within City Hall. And one of the departments you have to go to is very slow. Finance takes five and six weeks, or no, five to six times longer than safety and permits to, to process most permits. So there is no reason except that you have a consultant or you're an insider that you wouldn't want that function to be moved within safety and permits. So we'll see in the next week whether or not people come out of the woodwork and hire their liquor lobbyists to try to stop efficiency. You just mentioned working with the current administration. It's no secret. At times you have butted heads with this current administration, including the current mayor, Mitch Landrieu. Have you guys been able to work together behind the scenes? Because publicly a lot of people say Stacey Head and Mitch Landrieu just don't get along. Is that accurate or inaccurate? Um, personality is not, or, or I guess personal relationships within, um, between the legislative and the executive branch, that, that wasn't the, that's not the approach that I took. I know a lot of politicians in the past have gotten things done. Edwin Edwards, he got things done because he was buddy-buddy with everyone. I would just rather focus on the issues and focus on the facts and try to convince people of my position. I have had success with that with Mayor Landrieu. On many things, we are like-minded. Government efficiency. Uh, fiscal responsibility. I cannot, uh, you know, I, I really can't overstate how much better City Hall functions. That said, um, there are things that he hasn't focused on that I think were priorities, and there are things that he has focused on that I think were damaging to the city. So this is what I believe our government is all about. Respectful dialogue when you disagree with the person in another branch. And I hope that I have had that with him. I don't know that he sees it that way. He wants everybody to, you know, if you, I think one time we, we discussed, if you agree 90%, you ought to give on the last 10%. I actually think if you agree on 90%, you ought to argue about that 10%, then you get closer to perfect. Well, let me ask you these yes or no questions. I'm anxious to see your reaction. Yes or no, have you read his book? No. Yes or no, is he running for president? I think he hopes to. All right, let's go back into the early part. But that's of, just me, I have no inside information. No, right, I think he's making the tour right now, we'll see. Um, Ray Nagin, you also served with him. In a nutshell, can you sum up Ray Nagin? Because people who are from New Orleans mm -hmm. and us in the media remember this well. A lot of people said Stacey Head was the opposition voice to Ray Nagin, especially after the recovery. And we all know what happened to Ray Nagin. He's a convicted felon. He's in jail right now. But just give us your thoughts on serving with Ray Nagin. The, he was disengaged and damaged. And those were two problems that were almost impossible to overcome because no matter how much pressure or how much many conversations you would have with him, no, much, no, no matter how much public support you could get for a position, I just don't think that moved him because he was very disengaged. And again, comparing it to this current administration, he didn't have a great talented group around him. Uh, Mitch has hired good, smart people. He hadn't always told them to do all the best stuff, but uh, he's hired really, really great staff. Um, we didn't have that. We had some really good people, but by and large, the executive staff around Ray Nagin did not serve our city well. So when you had a mayor who was disengaged, you didn't have a talent pool that was there to fill in the gaps, and no amount of public pressure or discussion would move the mayor to action that was helpful. It, 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 we treaded water at the, at best, we treaded water for those years after Katrina before he was gone. And we all know what happened, like I said, to Ray Nagin. He is currently serving a federal prison sentence right now. Speaking of new administrations, let's go back in time again. In 2012, you left the District B seat, which you helped that district 
most would say tremendously, the Ferret Street Corner, a lot of bloody properties. Back in 2012, you were one of the very few public officials to endorse a little-known grassroots activist named LaToya Cantrell. She was running against Dana Kaplan, Ivy League grad, had a political machine behind her. LaToya Cantrell won that race, but then this past year, you chose not to endorse anybody in the mayor's race. So here's the question in a roundabout way. Do you support the current mayor-elect LaToya Cantrell? Absolutely. I think every New Orleanian needs to support Councilmember Mayor-elect uh, Cantrell. I think she is a fine person, and I am. I will do anything I can to make her a success because when she's a success, the city's a success. Is there a reason why you stayed out of this race last fall in 2017? I stayed out of all races. Um, it was, I think, important for me to to set that line of I am moving out of public office. The voters need to make their own decision about the candidates. And, um, and that was, you know, I think that was a demarcation line for I am out of office. I'm no longer going to be in the political realm. Maybe I'll take a little time and then come back in some fashion in the future. I don't really know. Really quickly, yes or no, I have to ask you this. There's an investigation dealing with her credit cards. Does that need to be investigated? Yes or no? I'm not going to get into that. No way. No, no way you don't want to get into it, but not no. yes or no on the answer. Yeah, no, no answer. Really quickly, you made two votes. You made thousands of votes while you were on the council. In December of 2007, the council voted unanimous, unanimously to knock down the big four housing developments. And in December of 2015, you were the lone vote against removing the Confederate monuments. Do you wish you could take those votes back or do you still support your decision from seven and 15? I think I made the right votes. The city's better off with those decisions? I, you know, I cast uh, on the on the side of the victors on one and the side of the the people who did not succeed on the other um, but I think those were the right votes for the city at the time and and I, um, I stand behind them really I'm going actually today I'm going to the grand opening of the gust uh, family community there was the gust senior center right. which is in Central City and it's run by an amazing group of people who are former residents so they are resident run and they're opening finally after dealing with Hanno shenanigans for probably 10 years that I worked I worked with the residents to We've try to get We've done several stories on it, right, right. And, um, and that is a community that will that is having a grand opening today to welcome new families to the Central City community, and I'm excited to go cut a ribbon. Sewage and Water Board. Mm -hmm. Do council members need to be put back on the Sewage and Water Board, especially in light of what happened to this city on August 5th? I don't think that's the panacea. I'm sure there are, there are good arguments for and against. Every politician is going to say that they know what the answer is. They're lying. It is such a horribly dysfunctional mess that I don't believe that the idea of putting one, two, or seven council members on the board will make a difference. I sat on the Sewage and Water Board for years. Almost every meeting, I would bring up something that was either, in my opinion, I used to be a lawyer, was blatantly illegal or incredibly foolish. Other than one other board member, it fell on deaf, e deaf ears. That's almost scary to hear that. that Nobody cared. Nobody pays well, attention, which is my biggest point. As I leave the council, if people would just pay attention when it doesn't seem to matter, when it's boring, before the catastrophe. If you think about, okay, the catch basin scandal that everybody focused on after the fact. For almost 18 months, I held committee meeting after committee meeting, issued press release after press release, sent letter after letter to the administration demanding that they fix the catch basins. I even quantified the amount of money it would take to fix it and the timeline that they should have been able to fix the catch basins. And that was, at the time, it was $4.1 million. There was no public interest or outcry other than the onesie twosies of people who had a broken catch basin in their, on their block. Of course, then it became, um, it was an I told you so moment. I don't want the I told you so moments. I would much rather the citizens engage when you can make a difference. We're having a vote on demolition in about a week and a half. A lot, I get a lot of complaints that uh, there are demolitions occurring willy-nilly all around the city. Why isn't the city doing something? Well, I'm trying to do something about it, but you can't worry about it. You can't complain after the fact. You have to focus on that minutia during the time that it makes a difference, during the time of the legislation going forward, during the budget process, when a council member calls the uh, budget department for the city before them and says, why did you take that $4 million that you were supposed to spend on catch basins and spend it on your pet project over there? We've covered you in the media for 12 years now. You're not naive to this. 
Some people love to love Stacey Head. Some people feel like you should have run for mayor or a higher office going forward. It didn't happen. It's water under the bridge. Others love to hate Stacey Head, just for whatever reason. How does history remember you and your time on the council in about one minute here, as this is the <laughs> final question? I don't know. Uh, that is not what motivates me. It's never been what's motivated me. Um, I have an amazing family, an incredibly good group of friends and core supporters. I have an incredible staff. Uh, when I do my job and I do a good job, I can see it in their eyes. And when I don't, I can see it in their eyes. I want to make them proud of me and I want to do the right thing. And, you know, my moral compass is, is certainly caught up in Judeo-Christian values and it's reflected in the people that are closest to me and around me. And if I do a good job for myself and what I believe and for the people that are around me that I think are honorable, amazing people, then I've done all I can do. And if I make somebody mad, well, you do. All right. Councilwoman Stacy Head, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. She's outgoing New Orleans City Council member at large, Stacy Head. I'm Travers Mackle. This is The Hot Seat. This entire interview will be on all of our mobile apps and at WDSU.com on Monday.